everyone out there. Welcome to the show. Daver here. What up? This guy's Chad. Chandler's back as well. How we doing, Dave? Oh, man. I am still vibing off a really good episode of AEW Dynamite uh, mm-hmm. from Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, uh, was it just me or did they like hit the reset button a little? Maybe uh, a fresh start or something? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> off camera in case you're wondering i bought the same sour gummies they did for the predictions for uh world zen and i said every time they say fresh start or something new i'm i'm eating one <laughs> so i feel like they're just gonna start saying it every sentence and i'm gonna just be through this I'm gonna go to diabetic shock by the end of this three i'm not going those, to bed three of those four or four of those i was freaking bouncing off the walls me too. It is, a, it is a lot of sugar. <laughs> like I can just taste it. It's a lot of sugar. Uh yeah. Uh yeah, you enjoy that. I'll I'll uh kind of get into uh well, we're gonna find out what Adam Cole had to uh say about uh the whole devil gang, MJF and uh the betrayal. Uh we had a pretty cool debut. Uh, well, an in-ring and an AEW debut that I really liked, uh, how they pulled that off, uh, pretty impactful and, uh, Uh, yeah, (laughs) pretty Uh, impactful. I see what you did there. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, they really pulled it off, uh, kind of the, the fallout episode for, uh, World's End. Uh, yeah. Great, great stuff. Um, did you two enjoy it as much as I did? I'm giving it a nine. Ooh, ooh. one part, one part ruined it for me. I it it didn't ruin, one part didn't it. ruin. Wrong, wrong choice of words. One this point is... or one thing made it, you know, not a ten. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely my uh, favorite dynamite of the year so far. Ooh, high praise, high praise. <laughs> um. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm hesitant to give it like a nine because that's so high. And then we just came off of the classic, which was all great. But I definitely at least give it like 8.5. I know that's not much of a difference, but I just feel like it was great. A lot of it was great. I have like some nitpicks and that like, I don't know. I nah, no, nah, it was like 8.59. It was a great episode. I got no nitpicks. I'm sure <laughs> we'll get, I'm sure we'll get to them, but I can't think about right now. Yeah. How about you, Chad? Uh, did it do it for you? I love it. I kind of feel like maybe he's been listening to uh, a lot of criticisms because way less reliance on legends. Like Christian was really the only one out there. Uh, a lot of a lot of focus on like the young guy, exciting guys. Like every match here, I was excited to see uh, your boy Takeshita and Darby tore the roof off. Who knew it was that easy? Huh? Right? Who knew? Yeah, uh, so the main Woody. event was fired. Jay White was uh, had a great segment. Man, like I couldn't complain about any of the wrestling. Uh, yeah, please more of this, please. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They definitely uh, everyone. You know, New Year, they're gonna they're gonna shake everything up. Uh, yeah, speaking of maybe listening to uh, criticism, did you hear about uh, Britt Baker? Kind of, she did an interview kind of talking about why she hadn't been featured very much in 2023. She kind of said, like, you know, AEW and I listen. And people were saying, you know, we've had enough of Britt Baker. So she's like, you know, I did the right thing, took a step back, let someone uh, be the face of the division. Uh, She said, I'm going to wait for them to fail, pick up the pieces and do it all over again. So, hey, I'm ready for Britt Baker. I'm actually that interview that I read made me really, really want Britt Baker back. Um, They're about to uh, really, I think they're going to focus on the women's division in a new way. And I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> I'm not that optimistic because all you got to do to up the women's, like, not all you got to do, but like the biggest thing you can do 
is try to have two matches a show. And until they start doing that more than once, I'm, I'm all believe you. But it, it kind of like doesn't matter how great the one segment is because it's always just the women's segment, you know? And it always feels like, oh, this is the women's segment. So it's still, we, it's still ah, until it starts feeling more natural, I'm not holding my breath. But I hope, you know, I could always hope. Yeah, one might say, we, I'm hoping the women get a fresh start. Damn it. I was <laughs> I also like gonna, this game. <laughs> I was also going to say. I was going to say it, <laughs> but well, I didn't. I'm thinking Britt Baker's waiting for the current stop, top star to fail. Tony Storm ain't failing anytime soon. That She's a mega star. She can't. Be, I. She had the best quote of the evening. Best I don't watch quote. wrestling. <laughs> that's going to be like a like a meme gif for years. Oh, like, oh, I don't watch true. wrestling. Yeah, gold. Man, oh, man. What a character. Uh yeah, we'll we'll get to that a little later. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll get right into it. Uh we start with uh Samoa Joe. <laughs> Don't have two in your mouth at the same time. It's even though one's not sour. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, demon. This is off the rails. Dynamite was great, but we don't care. <laughs> We're just bantering. Uh, we start out with uh, Samoa Joe directly after the uh, big win over MJF. He says, I am not a prophet, but I uh, gave you the future. I'm not a seer, but I saw the future. He says, he is not a man who makes predictions. He's a man who keeps promises. Uh, at Grand Slam, MJF used everything in his power to steal from him uh, his rightful championship. Uh, what MJF does to him, he will revisit back on him a thousandfold. MJF embarrassed him and cheated. Um, he turned everyone he loved against MJF and took everything away from him. In front of uh, his friends and family at uh, the Nassau Coliseum. MJF may be a scumbag, but Joe's a heartless son of a bitch. Um, he says, I am Samoa Joe, the AEW world champion. Uh, he says he will take everything from anyone who tries to take the belt from him. Man, yep, I'm, I'm into it, immediately into it. He deserves it. Looks good with the belt. He's a giant threat. And he'll be the perfect challenge uh, for Swerve to overcome. I figured out. I had three nitpicks. This was my one nitpick. My first nitpick. No Joe on the show, like, physically. I would have loved to see the new champion. However, this promo was still excellent. It was short, sweet, and to the point. And you kind of had Adam Cole fill in that segment of a nice, long, lengthy promo that breaks down the last couple months of storytelling. So it's something I would have preferred, but didn't tank the show. What do you think, Chad? Yeah, I mean, give me give me Joe on TV all the time. He's he's awesome. Uh, I just I love how he talks. His, his uh, vocabulary is so much better than mine. Um, and uh yeah i'm kind of hoping we get uh a good run not a long run from him you know just give me a few slobber knockers of uh, uh title defenses then uh here you go swerve and, well uh, i've been seeing we'll get to it when we get to the main event <clears throat> i'm seeing a lot of uh interesting booking ideas for what you do with that main event scene so i think i'm actually really getting excited for revolution and we're only like the first week of dynamite in between Right? We're going to get, hopefully, an actual build for this one. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're definitely probably going to get a uh, Samoa Joe Garcia title defense. We're probably going to get a Wardlow title defense. Uh, then we get to Swerve and boom, boom, boom. Um, should that happen at Revolution? That'd be perfect. Short, short and sweet. Yeah, you know, almost a quarter year. That's kind of good well we just had an over like over a year long reign you kind of need to like 
go back on that. Not necessarily hot shotting the title, but what I've been kind of pitching for a while is Joe picks it up, loses it at Revolution. Swerve picks it up, loses it to Osprey at All In. I mean, that's August. It's still a five month reign, and this is only his first reign. Osprey's like on another level. Like all of this is like making sense. It doesn't feel like it's hot shotting the title to me, but it's breaking up from that year long reign we just had. But yeah, no, it's good pacing. Um, you're probably way too young for this, Chandler. But back in the day when you made mixtapes, uh, if you had a bunch of really long songs, it sucked. You had to break it up with a couple like really hot bangers. And that's kind of, I think we're in that portion of our uh, wrestling title reigns. Yeah, WWE yeah. was kind of stale last year for a bit because it was like Roman's the only world champ and he's the longest reigning ever. And Gunther's got the IC title and he's the longest reigning ever. And Bianca Belair's got one of the women's title and she's one of the longest reigning ever. And the Usos had the tag titles and they were one of the longest reigning ever. And we're like, we get it. You want to break records, but we also want new champs. Like, we want to see this stuff. And some of them were like, Bianca Belair passed the record. Five days later, she lost the title. So it was like, you're just like making them break the records. And so you kind of want to break that up. As much as as cool as it is to break records, you kind of got to break it up and know your place. Yeah. After that, uh, we're going to get Adam Cole and his newly formed faction. Uh, I guess they're not the Devil Dumpling Gang anymore. They always will be to us. Yeah, they will be in my heart. Um, They got a new, uh, new song. I kind of like it. I like it. It's an edgier okay. remix that... of like Adam yeah, Cole yeah. the EW theme. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, they all get in the ring. We got Adam Cole sitting in a chair. Uh, Roderick Strong tells the crowd to shut up and listen to his best friend, Adam. Uh, Cole says, him. what, no sympathy <laughs> for me? Uh he said MJF created enemies in AEW uh, more than anyone, ran his mouth about everyone in the locker room, but he's the bad guy. <laughs> he says MJF is a narcissist. Uh, the only person who MJF cares about is MJF. Uh, he said the locker room, Tony Khan, and the fans will someday thank him for what he did. Uh, he says uh, he just beat MJF to the punch. Uh, MJF would have done the same to him. Uh, MJF needed Adam Cole. Uh, Adam Cole made the fans like MJF. He's the reason that they liked him. Uh, he said he wants to destroy a man to his core. Um, he says MJF is dead. Uh, calls the faction the Undisputed Kingdom, and they're all going after titles. We got uh, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett already with the Ring of Honor tag titles. Wardlow's going to go after the AEW World Championship and will gracefully forfeit the belt and give it to Adam Cole. Uh, Yeah. Right. Um, His face, the face of what someone like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was Wardlow's face, right? We were watching the same show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he says he hopes Samoa Joe is not the champ when Wardlow gets his title shot. And he wouldn't want to hurt a friend while he smirks. Um. Yeah, he says, the devil's here to stay, baby. Um, I'm into it so much more now that they're not all wearing masks and I know who they are. I'm The respect level is starting to re, re-level out. So, yeah, One of those I'm, things I'm into it. Where I remember complaining for weeks, like, oh, Samoa Joe just beat them all. That's lame. Like, Samoa Joe can just beat these four men up. It's like, well, that makes sense because they weren't going to attack Samoa Joe. It was a longer game. So it's nice that, like, holes like that that I had are being patched over. 
Yeah, I mean, Adam Cole's just got it. Like, he's just got the charisma to be able to pull it off now that he's on the other side of it. Uh, you know, when you couldn't put him to it, it was just kind of like, eh, it's kind of lame. But, uh, yeah. man, like, he went from just that lovable chugs, the chill dude, to this? He's dastardly and evil, and I buy it. I like I this is a nitpick. I know it's wrestling. I know I need to forget it. I do kind of want an explanation of how he got into all that production shenanigan. Like just I, I would like like just one little line like, ah, we paid Jimmy in the truck off and he turned off the lights and did all the hoopla. Like so I can't see Tony Khan in K phase signing off on all that. But I don't know. Maybe if like they have a picture of like Roddy in the production truck and he's like doing a big dumb goofy grin. I'd be satisfied with that. Like he's like, hi guys. I yeah, got you, Eric Adam. Bischoff. Eric didn't come out uh, as part of the NWO for like three, four, three months, four months. So it's it's not a big concern. I wasn't expecting an answer. It's just something that like I kind of would like one little teeny tiny, even just a throwaway line. Yeah, even Retribution had Mustafa Ali. Yeah, he was the hacker. They set that yeah. up totally intentionally. Um, I'm going to make a 2024 prediction. Ooh. Tony Khan will become an on-screen personality in no. some way, or, way, shape, or form, and I'm in for it. No, I'm so... Ooh. If you're going to do it, just have it be like a wrestler. Like, WWE have it right right now with, like, Adam Pearce and Nick Aldis. It's not, like, Mick Foley and Kurt Angle where it's like, oh, it's a star. You're like, oh, it's a guy who knows how to cut a promo and knows about the biz. But he's not like a huge name that it's distracting. So that's what and, I kind of prefer. Tony Khan would just be like, okay, okay, Adam Cole, you're the devil. I'm going to have to ask you to take all your friends and leave. Leave now. Okay? Can we do that? I'm general commissioner and you have to listen to me. In my perfect world, he has been going to acting classes for years, waiting for this moment to happen he, he's been a bad actor on purpose and he's gonna start like he'll run the devil dumpling gang and he'll be like ah i did it it was all me mjf even though he's in wwe according to my theory Ooh, yep and and we'll be like man tony khan got us the whole yeah. time he will have got me <laughs> um so after uh, the devil's here to stay, baby, uh, we get Jay White uh, music hitting coming out to the ramp. Uh, he's pissed off that he was collateral in the whole MJF game. Uh, the guns come out and they try to attack the undisputed kingdom. They get overpowered. Um, and guess who comes out? The acclaimed, oh yeah. Uh, they come out, they chase off the Undisputed Kingdom, and the Bullet Club Gold uh, turn their backs on the acclaimed and walk away. Man, I wanted them to scissor so bad. They're going to team up, right? Or, well, I don't I know, think they there's... might challenge him for the trio's titles. Maybe it'll be a three-way, a trip. Three way of a three three man teams. What would you even call that? A triple threat tag match. Triple threat. Triple square. Uh, triple, nine square, man tag match. Squared I threat. <laughs> threat square. Uh, yeah, not squared. I'm gonna be cubed. honest. Threat cubed. Ooh, ooh. When we get to the uh, highs and lows of the night, I have like three highs, so I'm just gonna recount them all. But this was definitely one of my highs overall. Was Every single, every single wrestler that was beat up by the Devil Gang was out on this dynamite talking about it. And like, they beat me up. I have names to faces. I know who it is. I know who to punch. Like, I love that. That makes so much sense that all of these people are like, oh, like, it's not just in kayfabe. This is the Adam Cole verse where only he lives here. Like, no, these are all real people. Like Adam Page came out of nowhere and was like, Yeah, I got yeah there's shit not always do. consequences in wrestling. Like it's like, okay, no, no, we're past that part of the storyline now, and everybody just forgets. Like, mm -hmm. no, that's a really good point. 
Adam Cole and his gang may have had good reasons in their own mind to take out MJF, but there was collateral damage along the way, and those people don't, aren't happy about that. So, like, genuinely, I did not expect that. I expected them to come back next week or a week from now, but all of them to come back, especially pa- Adam Page at the end, like, that's just really good. I, it's it's weird that, like, it makes sense, therefore it's good, but fuck, I, I don't care. It was great. Yeah, yeah, very good point, Chandler. Uh, I don't know. I, I think they're giving, you know, they're trying to make things make more sense, hopefully. I, I don't know. I feel like they're trying, yeah. <laughs> honestly. I still hate to say it. I think this isn't a nitpick. This is just how I feel. I still don't like that Roddy's in it. I would have really liked if Roddy was the only one against, like, that's, and he's still keeping a shtick. I literally wrote down, at least he still knows what's over, but. I, I'm, I'm, that's um, the one part of this that I'm really torn, and it's just because I just got to get over my Roddy being the odd man out is such an interesting story. I got to get past that. Who's uh, first to get kicked out, Wardlow or Roddy? I think Wardlow's going to leave. Like, he's however long, I don't know, but he'll get the title, and he'll be like, well, I'm out. Like, I don't want to give it to you, Adam Cole. Got what I needed. Peace. Wardlow probably has the confidence to be like, I could beat all four of you up at once. Like, I don't really care. So, yeah. Um, yeah, cool, cool segment. Uh, they gave us answers. They uh, tied up loose ends about, you know, going back like what, a couple months, maybe a little more. Um, all the devil beatdowns yeah great great segment really enjoyed it uh uh i don't want to call it a payoff but it was you know it was good <laughs> i i wasn't jay white attacked before wrestle dream or like right after so that's either before or after october so i think like Dude. i remember the acclaim and i remember adam page i forgot that they were the first victim or he was so i was like ah what? Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, I, yeah, top notch. Um, like if I if I need, like go through everything and remember every single instance, maybe something kind of falls apart. But for the most part, I'm digging this Undisputed Kingdom. Well, they're not my favorite part of the show, but I do quite like them. I'm interested in where they go, and God, I hope Adam Cole recovers soon. Right. I think that's kind of the linchpin to this succeeding, and I don't want him to feel rushed to like you know, end his recovery. Like I wanted to be fully healed, but that's kind of the linchpin is like, if it's just the kingdom and Roddy and Wardlow kind of just hang around for six months, waiting for something to do, that's not going to be great. But if they start picking up titles real quick or Adam Cole gets back quicker than expected, I think that'll take this up another level. Yeah, I agree. Um, Cool. Yeah. Moving on. We get a little, uh, Eddie Kingston recap here. Um, I like how he uh, he says he didn't realize he had confidence, and he's smiling. He's feeling good. Ah, oh, so good. What a freaking, uh, you know what they didn't show? Story. They showed every single Continental Classic match that Eddie Kingston had, besides the Andrade one. <sighs> Ooh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't information that we're just putting out there. He'll be in the rumble. Can confirm it now. He will be. It's okay, good for him. Yeah. He'll be with his life. And uh he 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 wrote a pretty like touching like thank you tweet about AEW. I don't know if either of you oh, uh, caught of- that. But- I deleted my Twitter. I'm sure he's thankful despite all the issues, but it is just kind of like it's interesting because I, I believe both MJF and Andrade are gone. So it's just odd to me that like they would talk so much about MJF and not Andrade. And obviously that should tell me that MJF is still around. But in my mind, MJF's role was a lot more important than Andrade's. So they would have to bring him up by name. And like just the vibe of this show feels like there's a top star that's not going to be around anymore. Like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but this feels like we need to, 
pick something else. We need a move Could on. Be, yeah, a lot of you hungry young men going after it tonight for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will, um, right here in my notes, I did say this does feel fresh. I'm taking one. Ooh. Uh, I can't let you do this by yourself. <laughs> Ooh, green. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I there hate you, you and me so much right now. But this feels fresh. I like the redesign for all the graphics on the card. Uh huh. So, so we're just goofing off. Uh, I don't have my sour things. I brought them to work, and a lot of people had had them. I'm gonna do a death nut. I'll be right back. Ooh, okay. Oh sure. So we're sitting here grossed out. Now you gotta leave the mic for a sec. Well, we don't want to move on. I mean. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're all talking. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll just chit chat. Um, that Eddie Kingston video package was great. Yeah, I mean, so good to see him win. I mean, as much as I still don't really care about the Continental Crown and all that, it does look good on him. It looks nice to see him with three belts. Yeah, and all the uh, teases for the stuff coming up, like uh, as part of the segment, really got me excited. Like hoping um, it's going to be like a really good year. Like I'm Ooh. hoping from I'm hoping... the 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 four way four man match. Yeah, yeah. There was uh, you know uh, between what he was talking about, then I think right after that, um, Scalibur teased a few things that were coming up, and it was like, oh man, like are we maybe getting um, some? There we go. You know, are we getting away from some of this kind of um, relying on Jericho, et cetera, and uh, well, like, moving on with some bold young talent? Even, like, they're still fantastic, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, even making sure they're not the top stars of the brand or the only stars of the brand. That's got to be important to them. Yeah. No, I mean, they should be an attraction. Bring them out for the big pay-per-views and... You know, they, we shouldn't see them every dynamite. Like, yeah. All right, have your four or five bangers a year and uh, let, you know, next match, OC Dante. Uh, yeah, Takeshita. Geez, like, stack card. Don't need them. I'm the only, like, oh, I think yeah. Dave, you, you're doing that fine, Dave. You are handling it. Wow, I somehow feel okay. like less of a man. I'm oh, I, I I'm kind of used to that feeling though. I feel just fine. Those those are so terrible. I'll never have any one of those again. I will say I already broke my rule. I did not refer to Dante Martin as he's back in my notes. I actually wrote out like DM every single time. Oh, that's funny. How are you holding up, Dave? You good? There's like little sour bits in the candy, so when you break it up, it's like oh, a little bit more, ooh, a little bit more. It's not bad, like no, but you get the flavor, like that. The green one's a really nice lime. I enjoy it. I think I only have sour cherry. That's all I have. Uh, I almost went for just the watermelon because watermelon. Watermelon's an option. Why would you do anything else? I like uh, cherry candy. I had these uh, cherry cough drops as a kid, so I'm I've been hooked on like really cheap cherry flavored my whole life. Nice. All right, got a Daniel Garcia promo here. Uh, talks about uh, Swerve's theme song being Big Pressure. Uh, Talks about what happens when Swerve applies pressure. Uh, says he's someone who doesn't fold. He doesn't break. Uh, someone who keeps pushing. Uh, he's going to fight through the pressure and beat Swerve Strickland. After that, we get a international championship match. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> now that you're talking, because uh, our problem was is we were talking and moving our mouth, which would just make it worse. Yeah, I can do this though. 
Uh, um, we got Orange Cassidy versus Dante Martin. He's back, baby. Uh, the official first AEW match of the new year. Um, we got some really cool, good mat wrestling. Uh, kind of Orange Cassidy trying to keep Dante grounded. Uh, pretty good tactic to do. Uh, we get a little uh, monkey flip spot where, uh, let's see, uh, Dante Martin, monkey flips uh, Orange Cassidy and kicks him. We get, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, this is there, right now. There it is. We get Orange Cassidy leisurely running around the ring with his hands in his pockets. As he gains momentum, he drop kicks Dante Martin into the barricade. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Dante <laughs> dives on Orange you Cassidy. Can do it. With you a, can do it. With a, oh, yeah, I got this. Orange, uh, Dante dives on Orange Cassidy with a tope suicida. Then Dante springboards on Orange Cassidy for a two count. We get Dante Martin. Uh, giving weak chops to uh, Orange Cassidy. Uh, we get Orange Cassidy thrust kicking uh, Dante Martin. Orange Cassidy does a swinging DDT to Dante Martin, and Dante Martin kicks out at two. Uh, ooh, and then a diving DDT to Dante Martin from Orange Cassidy for a two count. Uh, Dante gets on the top turnbuckle, but Orange Cassidy rolls away from him really slowly. Uh, Dante gets annoyed, goes to the opposite turnbuckle. Orange Cassidy rolls away again, but Dante uses the ropes to uh, get a little extra length and dives onto Orange Cassidy for a two count. Ooh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Orange Cassidy hits the orange punch for the win. Uh, yeah, pretty fun match. Uh, there's no way in hell Dante Martin was going to win that, but uh, I'm glad we're getting a little more Orange Cassidy. I like that they put him away on Rampage for a little while, and now he's something special, a little more special, uh, when we see him on Dynamite or Collision. Yeah, I kind of, I actually bit when uh, Dante Martin hit him with that, like, sort of go modified go to sleep, and uh, and he got the 2.99 off that. I thought we were getting the title change there. I was like, oh, are we going in a new direction? Fresh start this year? Just kidding, Chandler, I'm messing with you. Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I thought I every like, time. First one of the year, and... I was like, I I, uh, I thought we were going to see the three right there. So, I don't know. I bit on it. I thought it was a really good match. And uh, I, I thought the near fall was very convincing. Yeah, very early on with this match. I just kind of got to the point where I was like, I can't take notes because I can't, like, follow along. So, I'm just like, I'm just going to enjoy this. But it was excellent. Um, what little notes they did. It was just kind of like OC's funny stuff. Dante Mario, or Dante Martin, right? was blocking him from getting his hands in the pockets. Then he finally got his hands around the pockets. And he did, like, the most lighthearted limp jog around the ring to do the uh, drop kick. I thought that was funny. And then, yeah, I mean, it was a fun match. I think I wanted a new champ on this mat or on this night. Not that I'm a big Dante Martin fan, but I'm kind of over this OC international title run. So I was kind of just like, oh, my gosh, wouldn't this build this guy? And. I would be interested in V1 and see where he went. And I think the problem is, is he's very talented. He just has like no charisma, like on the mic or anything like that. So he's working on it. He's a lot better than he was day one for sure. Again, you can kind of tell just in my notes where I just refer to him as he's back because that's been his character since he's been back is that he's back. So, but if he's improving, yeah, I, again, Sometimes you got to throw these guys to the wolves and just see how they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, um, did we have someone come out and interrupt them after the match? 
Yeah, yeah. We get uh after the win, Hook and Danhausen came out uh to congratulate OC. Then Darius Martin and Action Andretti come out to check on Dante. Um the uh sound guy accidentally hit uh Dante Martin's top flight music instead of Private Party. And then Private Party's music hit. And Mark Quinn is back. Uh Chandler, you know nothing about Private Party, I would presume. Uh I know of they're them. They're fun, man. Like I've heard they of were, them. Yeah. They're fun. Uh Brother Zay, I guess. Uh you know him kind of. Yeah, that's that Isaiah um, guy, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that guy's freaking great. He was the only part of those Hardy matches that were worth watching. So, heck yeah. If, yeah. He's, with, if he's with someone that can wrestle, boom, baby. That's a game changer. Put the titles on him already. I liked how the crowd was, uh, they were into uh, Mark Quinn returning. So, Chandler, Mark Quinn does a shooting star press. Where when he is at the peak height, it's like time stops, and he floats. Ooh, it he's is got the craziest hang time I've ever seen. Ooh! So they actually beat uh, the Young Bucks in the first uh, AEW World Tag Team inaugural tournament. Uh, also, they were you know they were going places, and then uh, Mark Quinn got hurt like a year ago. Uh, before that, they cooled down quite a bit, but they are, it looks like they're going to give them a push again, which I really, really am looking forward to. I can't wait for you to watch them wrestle. And uh, yeah, they uh, said they've been keeping tabs on the tag team division. Uh, it's been lacking flavor and excitement, been lacking private party. Uh, they're putting every tag team on notice, including FTR, the Bucks. Which uh, the young bucks got booed pretty pretty hard, um, and the Hardys. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it felt <laughs> like a a certain kind of start, a fresh start. That's my first one <laughs> for the tag hey, division. I, do I hear a fresh start? I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this one before I put a new one in. I but... I hope so. It needs it. Like that was one of the founding principles of AEW was to bring back tag team wrestling and make it prominent. And I don't know, last year. Well, when, when FTR had the titles, I imagine it felt like that. And then big bill and F or Ricky Stern squashed them. And then it was all the complicated, like no one wants to do business for each other, which is the only reason why the transitional champs are still the champs. But yeah, I, I feel like, and again, I'm not saying this as an AEW original. This is an outsider. I'm seeing a lot of people I don't recognize come back, a, like AKA Top Flight, part, Private Party. So it's like a lot of AEW originals are finally coming back. So I'm really looking forward to seeing people I've never seen wrestle before. Yeah, I hope it's the shot in the arm they need. Um, my prediction is by the end of 2024, Private Party is going to be Chandler's favorite tag team. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's a good cool. question because what is my favorite tag team? Ooh, shit. Huh. What well, is mine? Gotta... All right, sidebar. What's our favorite tag team? I oh, would... Oh, shit. Uh, let's keep it to AEW. Make it fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I want to say Ricky Starks and Big Bill, only because they're, like, I do like their character. I think it's interesting where they're like, we're not friends. We don't give a fuck about each other. We're just two good wrestlers. I've sworn, like, twice. I need to taper it down. But I, get, I got mine. I like I like how they're like I, I'll say right now Vicky Ricky Starks and Big Bill, but that also could be because they're the champs. I got a uh, Sting and Darby. That's fair. Yeah. That's like sweet, you, baby. Do I have to say one that's currently together or all no. time? No. All right. uh -uh. Golden Jets, baby. I'm kidding. Get I'm out kidding. of here. No. Uh, you had me. Paige and Kenny, though. That would have been my all time for AEW. That, no, that oh, was, yeah. It was a good story. Did they ever have a name? Golden Cowboys. <laughs> I don't think they did. The Golden Showers. Ooh. 
Uh, you pay extra for that in most places. Uh, uh, private party returned. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> Happy to see him. Fresh start. Ah, it's another one. Ah. Okay. Um, so we had two promos. Next one is the Tony Storm. The next one I'm so excited about for the wrong reason. God, okay. Um, yeah, we got Tony Storm with Renee backstage. Uh, Tony Storm uh, makes a comment about Renee's perfume. Uh, she realizes that she's in New Jersey, not New York. Belongs on Broadway, so she's headed to Manhattan. Uh, Renee asks her if she's still going to watch uh, Mariah May's match. Uh, she says the girl can do with paying her dues. Um, and in New Jersey, nonetheless. So uh, Luther scoops her up and she says uh, chin, tits, and shoe. And uh, flips her shoe at Renee. Uh, absolute gold. Love it crowd was into it they loved it um yeah i'm sure you both were into that yeah this is i can't remember if it was here renee was all over this show for a, like a good reason she's awesome i think i just sort of like she's the modern day mean gene like she's yep. like able to express her character and who she is in such a like subtle but entertaining way, but she still doesn't overshadow the talent that she's talking to. Yeah, and I that's think a, that's incredibly hard, and she nails it. Yeah, yeah, it's a great she's, way. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't pull focus, which, yeah, she just enhances every scene she's in. And uh, <laughs> I, I love the fact that every time she's in a uh, in a, in a, a segment with Tony Storm, now she's like trying not to crack up. Uh, I would. Uh, she, kills me. Uh, if I was talking to a wrestler and I was like, oh, are you going to watch this match? And they're like, oh, I just don't watch wrestling. I'd like, I'd start busting laughing even if it was just like a normal conversation. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> okay. What do you do? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, she uh, doesn't watch wrestling. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Um, yeah, great stuff, man. Oh, yeah, and Renee, like, she's not afraid to ask the tough questions, too. <laughs> Like Mariah, uh, May, who's your first opponent gonna be? <laughs> um, cool, yeah, fun stuff. Love Tony Storm, everything she's doing. Uh, love Luther, uh, being part of that. Glad they gave him something to do. Um, yeah. After that, we get a Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews uh, promo. Um, they. Except FTR's challenge uh, is going to be in North Carolina. And if they beat FT FTR, they have to join the House of Black in front of their families and loved ones. Um, and it will be on collision. Uh, cool. Yeah, it'll finally get that. be good to get that blow-off match. Uh, they're totally joining the House of Black, right? I I'll think talk that'd about be the that. That'd be the best move. I don't think so. And they're I just like sad and like <laughs> it's in it's in their hometown. They're gonna win. I again, maybe I just feel like a lot of people are gonna leave. I also feel like specifically Malachi Black and Buddy Murphy or Buddy Matthews are looking to jump ship back because Brody King hasn't really been involved in this at all. And I don't know, just this is all just baseless speculation, but my God, I need House of Black to win because I took their threat of you need to disown your family as a stipulation. So, like, I would pay money to see that. And have, like, Dax and Cash be, like, crying, all, like, fake acting. And they're like, I don't love you anymore, Ma. I don't love you anymore, Pa. <laughs> I'm going back with my god friends. And they're, like, weeping. Their kids are crying. And they're walking back. They come out with, like, goth makeup. Oh, my, I need that. I don't think each other in the showers. Yeah, bring it back. <laughs> so I don't the think that's magic. gonna happen, but I need it to happen. You gotta get some tattoos. Fake tattoos, uh, and they're all like princesses and butterflies and stuff. It's whatever Dollar Tree has. No, 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 no. It's a giant Bret Hart portrait. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like one half of Bret Hart on each person's back, and they come together, and it's one big Bret Hart. Yeah. Best there was, uh, Tramp Stamps. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Graph to your consultant anyway. for tattoo ideas. We're open for business. Um yeah, yeah. Fun stuff. Uh but uh we get this uh next segment that Chandler liked. Um right? And this is the one you were talking about. Oh no, it was the FTR House of Black one because oh. I I need oh, yeah. them to like. I'm not just saying I need them to join the House of Black. I need them to disown their families on live television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be entertaining. This, I mean, it, it was epic because he called out Joe. Spoilers, but yeah, every single time he does this, every single time he says I'm going to be the champ, it's like, are they doing it? Are they actually doing it? Yeah. Um. Yeah, we get Renee backstage with uh, Swerve and Nana. Uh, she asks how he feels about facing Daniel Garcia. Nana calls Swerve the boss of bosses. Right, boss? <laughs> I like that part. Uh, Swerve mentions that Garcia is a Blue League guy and says Garcia had a good showing. Uh, and basically says he's looking for championship gold. Uh, he calls out Samoa Joe. Hell yeah. Uh, tells Joe to be ready. Um, yeah, he's already looking past Garcia. Um, yeah, he's got to take that belt. I, I want Swerve with that belt at uh, Revolution. Or not Revolution. Yeah, Revolution. Uh, yeah, that's... If I don't get that, I riot in my own living room. <laughs> I'll be very cross, but I'll still watch the next week's Dynamite in Collision. Yeah. Damn it. Um, but yeah, I I need that. I think a lot of people want that, need that. And when he when he called out Joe, the crowd, like you could hear him like, yeah, like there was electricity, there was energy from the crowd when he did that. So yeah, if they don't pull the trigger on that, man, they are duh um. Uh so yeah um after that we get the big debut of mariah may uh versus queen amanada apparently she was on dark quite a bit um i am instantly a fan she has the look the talent i think she could i i look for her to be queen amanada is all elite at some point here um but yeah uh, Mariah May, on the other hand, looked like a freaking mega star. Um, her skill level, now that we finally got to see it, dude, did you see how crisp and neat that Tierras was? Like, that Are, didn't look like something that we see on AEW. I described her drop kicks as Okada esque. That yeah. means something. That yeah. means something. Dude. So, this Mariah She's May. A I'm into her. Like, I'm already, like, this wasn't a long match. I think it was only five minutes, and it was it was all we needed. Like, I'm so hyped for Mariah May. Like, she was doing sling blades better than Finn Bauer. Like, huh? I didn't think that was possible. I thought he did them right, the best. So, yeah, and she's only, like, five years into her career. Can you believe really? that? Yeah. Damn. Five years and she's got like presence and oh she's so good. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Um, yeah, she did that really nice uh Tierras better than I've seen on television ever. Uh she did a drop kick for a one count. Uh then she drop kick Queen Amanata to the outside. Uh, they went to commercial, but then when they came back, man, I paid attention during uh, picture in picture, and she was, well, they were both kicking ass. But when we came back, we got this is wrestling chants throughout the crowd. Uh, they were into it. Uh, yeah, Queen Amanata hits hard. She looks like she uh, had some really great training, uh, looking great. She. Uh, did some forearms in the corner to Mariah May. Uh, she went back to the well uh, one too many times, though. And uh, Mariah, Mariah May ended up countering into that sling blade. Woo, it looked good. Um, Mariah May hits her Mayday finisher for the win. Uh, 
yeah, quick match. Uh, it, it got the point across. Mariah May is a amazing get for AEW. Um, and she's going to do some really great things. She'll have that AEW title uh, eventually. And she may even, heck, take that TBS off Julia. Who knows? I could, um, I could, I could see her as like the next potential women's champ. I don't think she'd go to the TBS title scene. I think she's like a little bit like I don't know. It's weird to say that she's higher up on the card than that, but yeah, she's already she's... tangentially in a program with Tony Storm, so it'd kind of be weird yeah. to sort of pull her out of that just to bring her back in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she'll have the women's belt eventually, like. I don't think she'll be taking that off Tony. Uh, but I, I think you, Chandler, kind of thought maybe before she might. Uh, or not. Had I was, you mentioned that? When they were very hush-hush about her first opponent, I was like, oh, is it going to be the winner of Tony and Riho? And she screws Tony and takes the title, but obviously they weren't planning that far ahead. I was just kind of saying that. I was like, oh, you're keeping this quiet for so long. Who is she? Like, Who is this person? It was like, oh, we just found someone. And she's great, but um yeah were you guys surprised when she kind of started talking she was a heel or were you expecting her like i was expecting that but a lot of people are like i didn't think she'd be so mean and like yeah I, I was i was picturing more ditzy i like the you know like she's like fangirling over tony storm so i was thinking more i don't know valley girl kind of stupid shtick and i was like whoa she's kind of evil i like it I guess I don't know. I was paying attention to all those. Maybe it's just because I like Tony Storm so much, so I'm just like waiting for any Tony knowledge. But like, whenever it would just be Mariah and Renee, and Renee would be like, "Oh, hey!" Like when I would, I brought up asking her a simple question, like, "Who's your first opponent going to be?" She'd be like, "That's none of your business," and then go back to her like, like ditzy kind of tone. So I was like, I don't know. Like, I wasn't surprised at all. I was like, "Oh yeah, she's kind of been a like subtly. She's been a bitch." So, well, I think she's gonna be, oh, the uh, the vector for Tony Storm to turn face. Basically, uh, I think they've realized that Tony Storm is too over to be a heel. She's gonna get betrayed, and Mariah will be the the heel, and Tony will be the face. Uh, yeah, they had to pivot like. I think Tony Storm will be a. What do you guys think? Do you think she'll she'll be a better face? Uh, I think she'll like. This is a cop out. She'll stay in the kind of tweener role she's in right now because there's a lot of people in the AEW who are kind of just tweeners, and it's better that way. Like Danielson can be a yeah. heroic baby face fighting from underneath, and then at the same time he can be an evil suggested goat man who's going to kill Eddie Kingston for being a bum. Like he can do whatever, and so I think. You know, Mariah May will be more hard cut heel. She'll cut heel promos. She'll be more vindictive and sadistic. Whereas Tony or Tony Storm will be like, "Oh, totally, I'm gonna be my, I'm gonna do my own thing." So I kind of that's what I would guess. That's kind yeah. of a like cop out answer. Like, ah, oh, she's just a tweener, but yeah, no, I'm kind of right there with you. Like, she's kind of in her own world, self absorbs. Like, she can sort of do whatever. Uh, kind of that sort of makes sense to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I like I like that Mariah May kind of, you know, eventually turning on Tony and uh yeah, that's the way that should go. Um after that we get uh Renee interviewing Mariah May in the ring, like we were talking about. She's kind of heelish, uh she didn't say she wanted to be a wrestler since she was a little kid, and it's surreal to be in an AEW ring. Uh, hopes Tony Storm is watching, and uh, the first Dynamite of the year is all about Mariah. Um, they, her only regret was that it was in New Jersey. Um, then we get uh, some new theme music hitting, and we get Mercedes Monet. Oh no! Twitter was wrong. Twitter was wrong. The show sucked. Now it wasn't Mercedes <laughs> Monet. Will Osprey didn't break his New Japan contract. 
they've got that on uh, in their pocket for sure for something coming up. We'll have another big, big episode of Dynamite, a themed thing coming up maybe. Uh, but yeah, we get Deanna Perrazzo, which I'm okay with. She was uh, she was in a WWE at some point, right? I'm not gonna say no. I don't remember her. I thought she was like a like a current TNA girl, right? She was a knockout. Yeah. Okay. I she easily could have been. I mean, I didn't know Juice Robinson was in NXT. I didn't like. There's a lot of people I didn't know were in NXT, so it's very possible. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with it. I know who she is. I know she's a big deal. Uh been women's champion all over. Um yeah, she's uh she says she's from New Jersey and if Tony Storm doesn't want to be there, uh we all don't want her here either. Uh she wants Mariah May to tell Tony Storm that uh no matter where she runs, where she hides uh diana will find her because she is all elite and it's the age of the virtuosa uh mariah says tell her yourself bitch <laughs> uh she slaps diana diana pump kicks her out of the ring uh thought it was a really cool debut i like how they wrapped up an in-ring debut into a AEW debut and it made it seem a little bit bigger so um yeah that gave me hope about the women's division uh that they're on the right track we got serena deeb coming back uh thunder rosa's back uh red velvet we're getting diana perrazzo clearly uh uh, mariah may is gonna be something big so yeah i've got hope and uh yeah, I think we're going to be going places. Um, yeah, Certainly what do you guys so. think? One little other thing I wanted to add, it was just a Taz clip, because when Mariah was like, if only I had, you know, my main event, or my debut had to be on New Jersey, that's the only bummer. And Taz was like, I get it, you know, it's pretty, pretty, pretty suck. So, that's it. Um, I mean, I hope so. Again, like I said before, it's a pretty low bar for me to start believing Tony Khan and that he's caring about the women is that you need to have two segments two whole segments on a show and this is kind of like i I get what you're saying where it's pretty cool to have the in-ring debut of someone and the aew debut of someone that's neat however for me i'm just kind of like eh like it kind of overwhelmed not overwhelmed but like overshadows mariah may and it maybe would not have given Deanna Perrazzo as big of a spotlight. Cause in that you're basically, I know you're not, but for me, it was like, all right, pick one. Who are you more interested in? And I was like, well, I'm still more interested in Mariah May because she's had build and she just wrestled and it was great. And personally, I thought she was better on the mic. So I, I didn't hate this segment. I wouldn't even call this one of my three nitpicks for the show. It was just kind of like, eh, I liked it. I like seeing her and it is nice having some new women in the division, but Ideally, you space the stuff out a little bit more. Yeah. How about you, Chad? What do you think about the debut? I liked it. Um, she she comes off as a big deal. Like I don't know, it was kind of neat to see two two people. I was like, ah, I don't have a lot of familiarity with them, but I've heard of them both, and uh both of them kind of you know gave me that it thing they kind of felt like stars so uh fingers crossed we get more spotlight on them and you know maybe more than 10 minutes a week a couple a couple more segments would be great but uh you know uh hope uh hopefully optimistic i guess is the uh good way to say it yeah it really felt like a fresh start oh I should have been keeping track of these. This is like seven. Oh my god. He's gonna have to go get uh, the loaf we... of bread again. No, I'm like second we're done recording, I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's hurts. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they, they they're cumulative. All yeah, right. What happened? They're all cherry. Um, 
after oh you got all cherry okay uh after that um we get where are we tony shivani in the ring uh interviewing christian and the patriarchy um yeah christian uh mama wayne nick wayne and kill switch come to the yeah, ring don't, don't want a dead name on the gravel sauce podcast no no uh christian wants to thank mother wayne nick wayne and himself but not kill switch uh the crowd chants luchasaurus uh christian says that he is superior to adam copeland uh he says he would like uh like to think that him and copeland left a little bit of their souls in the ring but he has no soul uh he said he made the tnt title prestigious and we get really loud luchasaurus chants uh he says his name is kill switch uh and he ends it with we are the patriarchy now and forever uh love it yeah christian cage is cool he's relevant i think it's great i like how they're how they're you know not oversaturating the episode with uh legends i think the little bit of uh christian cage we got was the perfect amount um yeah love it i'm a giant fan i i've been watching him in AEW for probably like two three years now and i value his character and i'm more of a fan of him than adam copeland just because i haven't i've only watched adam copeland wrestle the three four matches he's had in AEW. So. Yeah, I'm I'm a giant Christian Cage fan. So yeah, yeah, I love his control over the crowd. Like it's like John Cena esque. Like, you know, he wants them to start making more noise. He's like, Don't you boo me? So they boo louder. Like he he knows exactly what he's doing and it's beautiful. And also he had if they don't make a tweet t-shirt out of this, I'll be disappointed. The line of the night. You sweat hogs from Jersey. I don't know why that just got me. I was cracking up. There was so much New Jersey slander, and I don't have any personal opinion about New Jersey. I don't think I've ever been, but I loved it. I love it all where they're like, oh, this place sucks being in New Jersey. Great. Yeah, home of the devils. Uh, screw those guys. Mm. But, We're yeah, good. I mean, this was this was the hold of my second nitpick of the night. We'll get there. But I loved almost – I loved everything about this promo. I love whenever Shayna Wayne takes the mic and she goes, you – Boo me, you boo a mother. mother. I love that. It's so terrible. Like I, Shayna Wayne is so good in her role. Nick Wayne is so good in his role. Christian Cage is so funny. I love how he was like, "Am I two hundred day reign as champion?" And it's like, "Well, you didn't, you didn't win it on the first episode of Collision, so that's not two hundred days." And he's like, "I'm up two and zero against Adam Copeland." And it's like, "Ah, uh, he's not." But okay, we're just forgetting. Oh my gosh. And then just the delivery of that myself line with like it built up. You could tell it's coming, but he still does it so well where he almost is like, yeah, it's expected. You all know I'm gonna say myself because who else would I think? Like like it's so good. And then the crowd popped for it. They're like, Wait, you said <laughs> it. Like it's so like it's improved by that. The fact that if they all booed, yeah. they'd be like, ah, oh, it's just heel heat. Yeah, it's just so tongue in cheek and self aware, but yeah, he's just he's so committed to it. Like, mm -hmm. like he knows what he's doing, but he's doing it anyways, and he's pulling it off. It's hilarious. Every time he calls Nick Wayne his pride and joy, I just like my heart grows a little bit because it's just so <laughs> funny. And then I was like, I'm gonna give this title to Nick Wayne. It's gonna be the family legacy. I'm like, I'm gonna throw up, but I still love this. <laughs> this is so good. And then I mean, this is a stretch, but he said, I'm the title now and forever mm. is that a reference to double double e because their thing is then now forever is that is that you're okay i was, I, I was like Ooh, that's is. cool yeah yeah yeah. i thought that too my one uh, that's like, what uh oh isn't that what vince said right after he uh showed up on like raw when in the midst of his so uh <laughs> controversy 
Our slogan for the last decade or so has been then, now, forever. Yeah. Like, yeah, WWE, yeah. On their WWE. DVDs. Yeah. And then he, they changed it to then, now, forever together when Vince McMahon yeah. was going through the trials and he was like, we all want to be there for each other, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Ooh. but my one like itty bitty, weedy, weedy nitpick is that um, I wish we kind of got the next TNT challenger in line, but we're a little earlier sure. than that. And it's probably going to be Adam Copeland. So like I said, itty bitty nitpick. I just would like to know where we're going. Yeah, I was definitely waiting for somebody's music to hit. And I was like, oh, it's just kind of a standalone thing. All right, that's cool. Yeah, like someone cut a huge promo on the patriarchy and tell them what they're doing wrong. I would have really loved that. But not a bad thing. It was still an excellent segment. Yeah, loving it. Christian Cage, keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, So entertaining. I'm thoroughly sports entertained. By Christian Cage. <laughs> I'm very satisfied by Christian Cage. Yeah, that too. Um, cool, yeah. After that, we get Renee working hard, earning her paycheck. This is where uh, I put she's a modern-day mean gene. That, just FYI, this is the segment that I was like, yeah, she's the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, backstage with Ruby Soho, Soraya, and Harley Cameron. Uh Ruby thanks Harley for helping her on Rampage. Apparently that happened. Uh, Harley Cameron says she'll do anything. Uh, man, I don't know what they're talking about, but I like it, I guess. <laughs> uh, and Ruby is suspicious about what's going on. Uh, are they leaving her out of the... Uh, the orgy, or I don't know what's going on. I don't hey, know we what's don't, happening. We don't know that. We, we, we're we not there. We don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. It's not nice to speculate, but you're not wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Harley's yeah. going to go crazy and murder them all. She has, like, really good crazy chick vibes. I was expecting the yep. knife. I was a little disappointed. Or, like, like, a sledgehammer or something, like a sword, a gun. I don't know. Like, yep. Go a little cash wheeler on them. But they yeah. like it's like they just put her in and then they're like, all right, get her out. Get her out of the shot. Get her out. She's gonna go too crazy. Get her out. Um, yeah, I think they could uh they could really turn her into something that uh you know is funny and people like to see on TV. So well, all I'm giving them the do, benefit of the doubt. All it has to do is be better than QTV. If it is, then she yeah. won. That's, That's all a pretty she has high to bar. Do. That's yeah. a pretty high bar. That's like saying all you have to do is be better than Okada Omega. That's all you gotta do. It's not that high a bar. True. Um, cool, yeah. After that, uh we get I don't know, it was an okay match. Uh I'm kidding. Don't you say it that? Was... I gotta plug my laptop in. I don't expect this, I don't like this to catch the slander. <laughs> <laughs> um this was my uh, match of the nighty poo. Um, Tanoshke Takeshita versus Darby Allen. Uh, yeah, I I felt like I needed this when we had that uh, weird match at uh, where did they just have the match? Real Zen. Sting well and Sting and man. yeah the the dude yeah i when i saw them together I, I was like okay i need this and i think i mentioned that in our in our world's end prediction but man beautiful they booked it right away um and it ended the way it should have happened like there's no freaking way darby allen should be beating this guy um but yeah let me kind of get into the the beats of it uh yeah, Takeshita just manhandles Darby Allen from the get-go. Uh, Takeshita goes for a, a suplex, but uh, uh, Darby lands on his feet. Darby goes to dive on Takeshita, but Takeshita knees Darby in the head on his way out of the ring. Wow. Um, Takeshita hits uh, three rolling German suplexes down the ramp. Uh, Dude, like what? Uh, and I wrote, getting a push, uh, referring to Takeshita, like they're pushing him to the moon. Uh, 
Darby dives on Takeshita on the outside. Darby goes for a code red, but uh, Takeshita reverses into a pile driver. Uh, or was, was that a pile driver? He was kind of like hunched over a little more than a pile driver. That's something different, but uh, got a two count from that. Uh, Takeshita misses a running knee strike to Darby and hits uh, his knee on the barricade on the outside in front of the uh, Spanish announce table. Um, Darby capitalizes on that and hits a coffin drop on Takeshita on the outside. Uh, then in the ring, hits the code red on Takeshita for a two count. Uh, Darby goes for a coffin drop, but Takeshita gets his knees up. Takeshita superplexes him, uh, uh, or suplexes him, uh, release German over and over. Uh, he's Darby's completely over rotating, uh, bad landing after bad landing. Uh, we get Darby rolling up Takeshita uh, for a two count, then a crucifix bomb on Takeshita for another two count. Uh, Don tells. Uh, Takeshita to kill in Japanese. Uh, we get a big boot from Takeshita to Darby in the corner. Woo! Then we get an avalanche German suplex. <laughs> then a power drive knee for the win. Oh, good lord. So vicious. I'll let you two talk about this and then I'll, I'll put my two cents in. But please, what did you two think about this match? I thought Dude, this I was more hit. of a pay-per-view match than most of the last pay-per-view was. It was amazing. Oh, man. Like, the beginning sequence with, like, the map-based wrestling where you're like, holy crap. And, uh, yeah, that, those rolling Germans on the outside. I was like, I almost felt like in my, the back of my head they were, uh, like, trying to talk backstage. And there's, you know, the, the language difference. He's like, okay, then you roll me back into the ring. Yeah, yeah, roll in the ring. Got it. <laughs> Roll to get to the ring. <laughs> Got it. Like, wow. Mind was mind seriously blown. Uh please just keep making more of these matches. Takeshi needs to be a dynamite mainstay. That that's that's the that's the long and short of it for me. How about you, Dave? And yeah, like like I've said, they're clearly pushing Takeshita now. Uh uh. I know you're a little frustrated, Chandler, about him being on Rampage for a little while and then when we went to uh, the Portland AEW show, <laughs> you're like, where's Takeshita? They brought out the whole family but Takeshita. Hobbs had a match. Fletcher was there. Callus on hand, but no Takeshita. Yep. Well, he's back, baby. Oh, my gosh. Man, I, I am hooked. I am hooked on Takeshita like I was before, but this match made me feel things so yeah it was great all right chandler give us what you got i got that i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna like praise this match because it was great i just kind of started by going like yeah baby we back on tv he made it my boy and um like it was of course fantastic match Takeshi was doing crazy things like there's a point like early on where he like rolled darby allen rolled through and Takeshi still picked him up and just deadlift german him like i was already blown, like losing my mind and then Takeshi was on the outside, and Darby was going up for a dive. It was right before the three German suplexes. And I was like, oh, Darby's going to hit a dive, and they're going to go to commercial, and it'll be picture in picture, and blah, blah, blah. And he kills him with his knee. And I was like, what are we doing, Takeshi? Like, you're not supposed to do that. And then he gets him up for the suplex, and it was just little things where he's got him. And he's like, nah, a little bit further up. I'm like, why are you just going to do a suplex a little bit more up the ramp? That doesn't help. Oh, you're gonna roll and kill him. Okay, cool. Like, that's just the theme of the match is killing Darby. So, like, my gosh, if it was this easy to have a match this good on Dynamite, like, Tony, what are you like? Come on, man. What are we doing here? Where's he been? I also wrote down, is it like, is Rampage this good? Is he doing this on Rampage and I'm just missing it? Like, I doubt it. But nobody knows because no one's watching it. And then, a little like teeny tiny moment that I loved is when Takeshita need the barricade and went over it. He's selling it, and 
Callus is like, oh no, my boy. And he's like going over to him and he just sort of banded him with a piece of paper, like doing the least he can. But he's like, I got you. I'll protect you. So, like, Don Callus is just the best lame loser um, manager. I wrote down, is he just big Sammy Zayn? Because he hit a Haluva kick and I thought he was going to go for an Avalanche Blue Thunder bomb. But, like, no, I, I never thought I'd be that hyped about German suplexes because. Lesnar's kind of killed them for me because he hit so many, and you're just like, ah, like if you're not a Lesnar suplex, who cares? But my goodness, they were so amazing. And then, not to be the Debbie Downer of the group, maybe I'm just more pessimistic. I don't think this is a long push. I think this is a week long push because they're doing the match next week. And I, as much as I'm telling myself to catch just going to pin Sting and start that run. I don't think it's gonna happen. So if we're doing our no. if we're doing our two point one point, I'm going two point Sting Darby, one point to Keshta. Because yep. I, that's I, fair. I, I'd be buzzing. I think honestly, if it wasn't in Daly's place, I'd be a little bit more on the Takeshta Hobbs side because Darby's got to or not Darby Sting's got to lose at some point, right? Like you really no. you really want him to be undefeated until the end. You don't want a singles mm-hmm. match against Darby Allen to end it. Yeah, well, I think Sting should win it. So essentially, what I would here's my pitch, right? To catch the pin, Sting. Sting's all like, "Oh, I can't do it." Darby's like, "No, no, no, let's have a match." There you go. That's how you get to Revolution. Ooh, that isn't bad, man. That isn't that, terrible. But that's all the, the man. Thing. The one guy. The one guy. I mean, who he Sting. he comes off as like the Sephiroth if you're a gaming nerd uh, of the AEW. And if you aren't, look that up. Very yeah. important gaming reference. He's very beautiful. But I don't know. I mean, this match was fantastic. I would love it if we had a long-lasting Takeshita push. But I'm also pretty satisfied with Joe as champ and Swerve's push. Like, of course, I want the best for all my boys. But you can't just push who Chandler likes, you know? I don't know Chandler's got pretty good taste in boys. <laughs> um, I don't know. I... Like, the problem is, it's like, I have ideas of, like, who would be a good person to be the next TNT, international, world, and Takesh is not really on that. Like, any, like, I just don't see it right now for me. I'd love him to win, like, the tag straps, but then it'd just kind of be, like, Ricky and Big Bill, where it's like, oh, two guys who aren't really a tag team, they got the belts. So, I don't know, but it was, uh, it was fan-freaking-tastic. It's, uh... I believe them saying Eddie can defend each belt independently. What do you think about Takeshita taking that Ring of Honor World Championship off Kingston? Emotion. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, when I said I don't want. Him. When I said I don't want him winning any titles, that like I wasn't even thinking about Ring of Honor. I wasn't even entertaining it. Like. That would be like, yeah. hey, would would you be satisfied if Cody finished the story by winning the NXT championship? And it's like... I mean, it's kind of probably what's going to end up happening at this point. It's a belt his father never held. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> to The Rock. But oh, not yeah. to derail us. Ooh. Yeah, this isn't a Raw podcast. This is a Dynamite. What happened next? I will say we're about to get to my next nitpick. No. But before we do, uh, everyone out there, go ahead and uh, give us a comment on uh, what do you think about Takeshita uh, getting that win over Darby? Um, is it a short push? Are they going to have big big plans for him in 2024? Um, yeah, tell us what you think uh, while you're at it. Don't forget to uh, subscribe. Give us a likey like. Um, it costs nothing. It's so free. <laughs> you can always take it back, uh, but you never will. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, let us know what you think about Takeshita. That was, uh, I think, all three of our match of the night, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was my other highlight of the match, or highlight of the night. We're still not on my third highlight of the night, so we'll get we'll get. Yeah. I'm sure cool, you can yeah. guess it if you know my tastes and likes, but we'll get there. Was it Dan Housing sitting in the front row booing Trent? Oh, wait, yes. that was mine. 
That was my last nitpick. He should have been in the match. Um, cool. Yeah. After that, we get Renee backstage with the Don Callis family. Uh, Takeshita yells things in Japanese. Uh, I love that. Uh, Don Callis challenges Sting and Darby to a match uh, on Collision against Will Hobbs and Takeshita. I thought it was um, Dynamite because should... it's in Daly's place. Oh, yeah. Dynamite, not Collision. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's where I'm like, yeah, no way Sting's losing because you're not going to have Sting lose his last match in the home of AEW. That's where I like realistic no Takesh is not winning but i think if you are if they are pushing Takesh to the way you're saying he's got to be sting like he's got to like i'm not even saying pin darby he has to pin sting but i don't think it has you know it doesn't have to be sting per but, se you know, it, like it, it would help it it would help later it, it could you know he, he can still get a big push after all the sting darby stuff you know? i hope so we'll see um but yeah, I think they're going to do something with him. Um, yeah, after that, we get a number one contender match for the Continental Crown Championship. Uh, Trent Beretta versus Brian Cage versus Brian Keith versus El Hijo del Vikingo. Uh, really like Brian Keith. Uh, he looks great. He's been having good showings uh, in Ring of Honor and Dynamite. Uh, collision. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a fan. I think they should uh sign him sooner than later. Uh, Vikingo does a crazy spinning Tierras where he gets an extra spin before his legs flip. Uh, can't remember who Trent I think or Brian Cage. Uh. Yeah, Trent looked really aggressive. Uh, Dan Housen was ringside. Did I miss that? Was he booing Trent? He was. Ooh, for, for what he did at the uh, Battle Royal. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, Vikingo ends up springboarding off the ropes to drop kick Brian Cage, then gives Brian Cage uh, running knees to his face in the corner. Brian Cage goes for a superplex on Brian Keith on the top turnbuckle, but Trent release German suplexes Brian Cage instead. Uh, Trent hits a knee strike, covers, but Vikingo stops the count uh, with a, uh, a dive from the top turnbuckle. Uh, Keith Lee ends up clotheslining Vikingo. Uh, Cage hits an F5 on Keith, but Keith rolls out of the ring. Brian Cage hits two power bombs on Trent for two count. Then Danhausen gets in the ring and curses Brian Cage. Uh, Keith and El Vikingo kick Cage. Uh, Vikingo flips on Cage on the outside. Trent reverses Brian Keith's finisher into strong zero for the win. Uh, and he's going to challenge Eddie Kingston on collision. Um, yeah, I know he's not going to win that belt, but man, they got to get tr uh, give Trent something, right? One day. <laughs> I, I've been thinking that ever since he came back from injury and he did the, like, the typical wrestler thing, came back, and he's just looking awesome. And I was like, oh, this guy's going to get a push. Not so much. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Get him away from Chucky e. T. I hate to say it. I like Chucky e. a lot, but he's not the same level as Trent. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 like he's an elevated jobber, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Trent held like gold in like New Japan and you know. That's surprising. You would not like I wouldn't he doesn't seem like a guy who'd be a champ. Like this is gonna be a little negative. But this is my kind of other nitpick, and I don't think it's a nitpick. I think it is kind of an issue with me. Like, we're already in to the field of opponents for Eddie Kingston's new championship, and it's already the same people. He was, like, the same level of people he would wrestle for the Ring of Honor title. So it's kind of like you, you haven't made, like, this title feel important by making Trent Beretta the first challenger, you know? When I was watching this match, I was like, okay, Brian Cage, ooh, he's a big man, big man of meat. 
that'd be an interesting, like, I would want to see how could Eddie Kingston beat him. Ooh, if it was Vikingo, that would be awesome. Could you imagine if Vikingo won, holding four titles at once? Ooh, like, you know, I wouldn't believe he beat Kingston, but that's the story you tell is, is he a four, is he a guy to win championships across four different divisions? What kind of guy is he? And then even Brian Keith, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I was like, you got He's this crisp. Hot, yeah, he got this hot new upstart in AEW. Maybe he has a phenomenal performance against Kingston, and it mirrors Kingston's introduction to the company, where he has a great match against the champion, and then off the strength of that comes in the championship. And then Trent won, and I was like, I don't like. He, I don't care. I don't want to see that match. I, I, he's not going to win. Like it reminds me of the collision before Full Gear, where the same thing happened, where it was a four-man match for Christian's TNT title, and I was like, "Oh, Brian Cage was in it, Commander was in it, and there was someone else." And it's like, "Oh, they could do this, they could do this, they could do this," and then Trent won. And I was like, "Oh, gee, I wonder if Trent's going to beat Christian Cage. I wonder if Trent's going to beat Eddie Kingston, who just beat Moxley and Danielson and Andrade and like all these names that were just beat." And it's like. Eh, really? That's your pick? So, I'm just kind of let down by that. But when the match was, like, kind of just okay to me. So, I was a bit negative on that. But other than that, I mean, Eddie Kingston looked great. He was funny on commentary. He looks great with three belts. So, if something's working, I'm glad it's him. Every time I see that belt, it looks even more beautiful to me. I like the engraving. I think it has like depth to it. I don't know. I think it looks cool. Yeah. It's different than the other belts, you know. Um, kind of reminds me of uh when WWE debuted those uh tag belts that looks like the, like the like Roman gladiator type style. The pennies. Yeah. I I, I was I the, those ones kind of grew on me and it's kind of gives me similar vibes. I don't know. I like it. I have nostalgia for them because they're the only belts I've seen, really, is that design since I started watching WWE. I would like a new one. I personally am ready for a new one. But I know the way they make titles. It's just going to be a, like, yeah. mini ver- like two mini different versions colors, of the WWE title. Yeah, colors, so I'm not, I'm not begging for it because I don't have faith. That they are just going to make the brand the title, so whatever. Yeah. Um, cool, yeah. Good uh good match. Uh maybe not the best uh winner and opponent for Eddie, but yeah, not a bad match. Everyone got to do their do their shit. Um after that we get Renee backstage with Daddy Magic. Uh before Daddy Magic can um say anything, Hangman Page. Uh Comes out of nowhere. He says he's there to beat someone's ass. Uh, if he can't find Samoa Joe, he'll find Adam Cole. If he can't find Adam Cole, he'll find somebody else. He says, give me a reason. Uh, Daddy Magic looks terrified. <laughs> yeah, um, I um, I So I just started off writing all like, oh, Daddy Magic on commentary. I'm excited. I, I'm really enjoying Daddy Magic, but it should have, like, I should have known because Daniel Garcia. And then Adam Page walks in and he's pissed. And I was like, oh my God, ugh, what are we doing? What are we doing? What's going on? This isn't what I this isn't what I thought. What are we doing? So like I was so pumped for the main event. Like, I was already looking forward to it because it's two of my boys. And I wrote, uh, how can Tony Khan pit two of my boys against each other? But like I was already into it. And then there's this looming threat of Hangman Adam Page. And again, he's pissed because of the devil. That's why he's around. So just brilliant. Yeah, I gave it that big fight feel. Like it really, like it felt like this stuff was a big deal now. Like adding him into that, like kind of you're mixing like the elements of danger with the sports entertainment. I thought it was a really good mix of everything. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Hangman Page uh, really pulls off the like, a uh, wild card, unpredictable kind of Brian Pillman-y guy, like uh, right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm scared of him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like how you put that. Like you're like, oh, Daddy Magic's gonna be on. Oh, like what's going on? Well, that's what I wrote. So in my, uncomfortable. That's how I wanted to put it. In my notes is I was like very small handwriting. Ooh, Daddy Magic. Oh my God, it's Adam Page. What are we doing? 
<laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, he's uh, great at what he does. Uh, but yeah, we get our main event of the night. Uh, fantastic match. Uh, one little uh, bocce bocce poo, but I'll I'll let it slide. I guess it that that this is what made my nine not a ten of the night. Really, that was the one point. Interesting. Only because uh, we'll get to it. I'll tell and I'll tell you why. I'm interested. Uh, I I wish commentary saved it, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Well, they tried. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get swerve, there. Uh, swerve Strickland versus Daniel Garcia uh, with Daddy Magic on commentary, which has grown on me so much. Uh, yeah, I think he's got a career in that. To be honest, uh, we got uh, Garcia not backing down from the get go. Uh, yeah, Swerve is super dangerous on the mat. Garcia wants Swerve uh, down on the mat with him. They slap the crap out of each other. I uh, really liked the uh, kitchen sink that uh, Garcia gave Swerve. I love seeing that in a match. Uh, we got Nana and Garcia having a dance-off, uh, which was all a ruse to get uh, Daniel Garcia distracted. But he saw right through it and uh slammed swerve into the ring post before he could attack him uh swerve did a really brutal death valley driver to garcia on the apron uh garcia fires up and kicks swerve down in the corner uh we got a stalling cyto suplex to swerve for a two count uh capture backbreaker to garcia from swerve uh swerve confronts daddy magic down at the uh commentary table but garcia shoves him into the barricade garcia tries to get swerve in the sharpshooter on the commentary table but right when he tries to lock in they fall off oh it did not look good and what really did it for me looking at swerve's face I don't know if you guys focused on that, but he was just like stunned. Like, I can't believe that just happened. But you could see in his eyes, he just stood there, like, did eyes were wide for like two, three seconds, but then he just like looked determined and like started rolling away. So, like, he's like, all right, we got to finish this. And he looked annoyed and shocked, but like, yeah, man, he just slipped right off when tried to lock that in. It, it didn't look good. And the crowd had to go, you fucked up, you, you know, like, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I, it didn't kill the match for me. Uh, I actually kind of praised them for it. Cause I really liked how quickly they both recovered from it. Like it was like, ah, yeah. we messed up the spot. Let's just get back in the ring and keep going. Like I, I completely yeah. missed his face. I kind of want to go back and just see it. But I, I just wish the commentary were like, Oh, like, Swerve rolled out of it. He did what he could to get out. Like I wish they kind of were like that, but again, I don't think they expected that either. So I think I think Taz mentioned that. Like he tried to be like, oh yeah, he Swerve did the right thing. He rolled rolled off or whatever. Yeah. And they were trying to give the whole it's slippery and not the best place <laughs> excuse. Yeah. Um, well, I wonder how they would have ended. Like, let's say it worked. I wonder what their end game would have been. Like would Daniel Garcia have um, gotten him out? And like, would it be Swerve to beat the count? Would Nana have done something? So maybe I, they were going to do the same thing. Like fall off eventually. Swerve, and they just did Swerve, it a little Swerve was going to, Swerve was going to flip him. Maybe. Interesting, or Swerve was going to lift up a uh, bridge and, uh, Ooh, I don't know, like kind of like crawl that. off. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, maybe that yeah, maybe cool. they did have something cool, like really cool for Swerve to do planned, and because they fell off, Swerve was like, oh, "When are we going to do that again? Like, when are we going to have? When am I going to be fighting Daniel Garcia again? And when are we going to do this again?" So maybe, yeah. but but uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't it didn't ruin anything for me. It just took the night from a ten to a nine <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah, it's still a great match. I mean, that's uh, fair. But yeah, after that, we get Garcia uh, giving some knees to swerve. Garcia hits a uh, 
or actually Swerve hits a flatliner, then a house call for 2.999. Uh, Swerve hit a Swerve Stomp, his finisher, for two. Uh, Garcia kicked out of that. Uh, Garcia tries to roll up Swerve, gets a two count out of nowhere. Uh, then we get Swerve hitting another uh, house call. Then his uh, beautiful JML driver for the win. Uh, yeah, beautiful. Uh, great match. Uh, Swerve put his hand out to shake Garcia's hand, but Nana low blows Garcia. Daddy Magic gets in the ring and gets low blowed too. Uh, then we get it, man. Hangman comes out and he's looking to kick ass. Uh, we get them brawling. They're separated by security. They do the whole one man got loose. Oh, the other man got loose. Like, I uh, love that trope. Uh, yeah, it ended with uh, uh, zoom in on Hangman looking like a crazed animal. Beautiful. Yeah, great ending. It felt very WCW for me, which I, I value and I need. Uh, so, yeah, great episode. I, I like what they're doing. They better keep this momentum going. Yeah, a few more shows like that, and I think they're going to buy back a lot of the ill will they've been building towards some of the fan base. Cause I think this is the AW everybody kind of wants. It's more in ring based. Um, this the, like more of the stories kind of surround kind of are told through the fighting as opposed to, uh, here's some slapstick that to kind of give us a half ass reason to fight. So yeah. Um, throw a few, few more shows like this together. And I think maybe we're going to start, uh, kind of seeing some of the uh, criticisms go away that have been eh, kind of fairly given out. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I know sold it earlier when Dave was talking about the match, but my third highlight of the show, and I, I've, I've been debating this whole time which one I'm giving it to. I think I've figured it out, but that Garcia Nana dance-off must see TV. My goodness, that's the Hogan rock of a new era. Like, wrestling has kind of been doing this where they'll have two silly wrestlers do that face off, that epic face off, and it's like they'll just play it straight. They did it on Raw a couple weeks ago with like R Truth and this jobber. It was hilarious then. It's hilarious now. Like, I want them to do it in every match. Well, not every match because you can't do it, but when you get that crowd re reaction and you can. Ugh, and so this was just so much fun to watch, but it was great to see Swerve and Garcia have just a really great match. Garcia in the main event? What what are we doing there? Tony Khan, what's the plan? But I, I love it. I, I love it so much. And then Hangman coming out. I think for me, it felt so fresh, maybe even new, because uh, last, uh, last like, I'll, I'll take it after I'm done with this, but last like five or six dynamites have all ended with a wrestling match because it's all been the c2 that's been fine because they've all been great but it felt unironically so fresh to have a brawl a huge brawl yeah. end the show and i mean we just had the christian cage and adam Cole and brawl but that was a like a wwe backstage brawl where it's just two guys going uh, 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 and there's like jobbers trying to break them up where you're just like ah whatever this is just filling time yeah. and getting to the pay-per-view but this felt like two guys who wanted to kick each other's ass yeah this like, felt important because they were already like three minutes into the overrun too like this like like you're like oh they're signing off they're already pow oh, no there's more holy crap like because yeah. this went a good what five six minutes into the overrun so it was like Oh my God, like. Five pulls nice because I can tell how long they go over. So I knew they were five minutes over. So I was like, oh shit, we get three minutes at Hangman and Swear. I'm like, wow. So I want to bring this up to you while I'm eating this. A big pitch that people are having triple threat for Revolution Hangman Joe Swerve. Yes, please. Oh God. Oh. Yeah, ah, yeah. No, that's smart because Joe is fantastic in the ring, but he cannot go long, or otherwise you sort of start seeing the age and yada yada yada. So that kind of that's like the perfect way to use Joe. 
you know, come in, do Beautiful. something insanely violent, then do the old trope where he's off to the side for a minute while the other two go at it. Uh, I, I love that. And then you could have Joe retain, like say he pins Paige, and then you go to double or nothing, and that's the singles one-on-one swerve Joe match. Yeah. Please. I'm into it. Um. So speaking of uh, Chandler, you mentioned uh, something like uh, Tony Khan. What are we doing with Daniel Garcia? Um, Did you know he came out, Tony Khan, right after Daniel Garcia or as he was coming up the ramp and uh, addressed the crowd? Did you hear anything about that? Oh, what? Uh, Yeah, Tony Khan said, uh, Khan stated after the show went off the air that fans will be seeing a lot more of Garcia in 2024. So that's a very good thing. He deserves it. Does. Yeah, I think they're pushing pushing him to be a major star. He's gonna no, do I mean, it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm all about it. Sorry, I just like randomly remembered we're gonna talk about news and WWE had a big um. Yeah, what was it? I'm looking it up. I think it's the location for the 2024 Money in the Bank. It's not a partnership with TNA? No. That one was shut down pretty quickly. I think it's that uh, Money in the Bank this year will be in Toronto. It's actually going to have three things. It's going to have a SmackDown on Friday. Saturday is going to be an NXT event and Sundays. So it's going to be a lot of stuff. Cool. No TNA. Uh, you guys want to get highs and lows? Mm-hmm. You want to start? Cool. Um, I'll, I'll start it off. Um, I guess my high point of the night was uh, the finish of the Darby Takeshita match. The uh, Avalanche German and the, uh, the, what was it, Power Drive? Knee, I just say big knee. What they call his, it. his big knee. Oh my gosh! And like the feeling of like, oh my gosh! Like Darby Allen just got beat clean, fair and square in the middle of the ring. Like yeah, that made a often. statement. Nope, that made a statement. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I'm optimistic about this being more than a one week little baby push. Like he may not win against. Sting, but he's going to do great things after that. I still expect him to lose. I think it'll be a fun match. I'm a, like, I still love Sting, so it's not like I'm I'm mad. I'm I'm like this is great for Takeshita that he gets he gets Sting's last match in AEW's hometown. That's awesome. So even that's a push. And then uh, my low point was. Uh specifically looking swerve in the eyes right after he rolled off the commentator <laughs> desk like i couldn't tell if he was just like hurt or just shocked or like but then he like immediately was just like oh and like got it together and started going so yeah that ah, man it it was like i said it wasn't bad but i no other moment in the show made me go like oh, like cringe a little so um yeah, if and that's your low close... point, it's a darn good show. Yeah, that's impressive that yeah. that's your worst part of it. Yeah. Uh, about... And I really like uh, Deanna Perrazzo for uh, debuting and Mariah May. I'm going to be very excited to watch every single match that she has now instantly. So, yeah. Who wants to go next? Cattle Sauce? Ooh. Uh... Let's see. So my high point, I'm not going to specifically put over one thing as so much as the cautiously optimistic feeling I got coming off the back of this show. Um, I just loved it. Like a lot of uh, young, fresh talent. Uh, I'm not doing it. My mouth hurts. <laughs> it Game getting, over. Uh, getting pushed up, getting pushed like. God, I hope we're going in that direction. Like, let's see more Garcias and Jay Whites and Takeshitas, and let's see them all get pushes, and let's build build a future for this company. Uh, so, 
that's kind of my high point is just overall like let's keep this direction going because i thought this was this is the this is the dynamite i've been wanting to see for quite some time and i'm happy we got it uh low point hmm, man that's a tough one perusing the notes i should have taken this note and i did not because i am dumb uh man i don't got much you want me to say mine while you think about it? Yeah. Okay. So I've, I've whittled down my high point. I'm just giving it to Takeshita. I know Darby Allen was fantastic in the match. Got to, you know, shout him out too. Of course, he's excellent. But I, it's, it means so much to see Takeshita have a good match finally after, like, losing to Jericho and that awful dragon match and then that awful eight-man tag. I was That's why I'm so negative. It's, it's like, it's been so bad. We forgot about, like, doesn't matter that he pinned Kenny Omega twice in a week. It doesn't matter anymore. But now it's like, okay, he's coming in. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to give it to him. He was fantastic. And my low point, I am giving it to Trent Beretta, winning the number one contender. As I said, because for me, and I'm, and this is easily just be, I booked myself into a match. And, you know, this match could be great. But I'll just put it this way. I could think of three interesting stories they could tell with the other three guys and i would want to see the match for the other three guys i do not care about this match like i i don't i don't see anything other than a conclusive eddie win coming so that's it uh, yeah yeah i guess yeah that i guess that whole segment or was kind of the weakest point yeah i'll go it with wasn't- that it wasn't even a bad match it was no a- it wasn't bad but it's like you said the wrong probably the wrong winner Plus, uh, he still kind of has heat because he uh, he kicked out my boy Dan has and cost me some points. Yeah, dude, maybe uh, he won't win, but he could like tell a cool story by turning uh, turning full heel, uh, doing something really dastardly. I think that could redeem some stuff for him yeah. winning. If, if I'm proven wrong, I'll eat my humble pie and say Trent Beretta was great. I'll we'll make it the thumbnail. Chandler was wrong about Trent, but. <laughs> As of right now, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, so while I'm thinking about it, I forgot to mention how great it was to see not only Jay White, but the guns. We didn't bad. even mention them. We love we're the guns' biggest fans. We didn't even like I was hyped. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're back. Yeah, yeah the guns are my back. second favorite team in uh AEW. Yeah, yeah. First okay. being Golden Jets. First being Golden Jets. No, actually, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about them when we were talking about this. None of us talked about them. The Outcasts. Or not the Outcasts. The, the Outrunners. Outrunners. Oh, yeah. Truth Magnum, baby. <laughs> Where have they been? Are they all elite? <laughs> Are they on Ring of Honor? Yeah. Are they honorable? Oh, they're probably Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um. But yeah, love the guns, man. They're like putting on more muscle mass and like every match they have is better and better like i don't know maybe bullet club gold could be uh turning face here soon and they're gonna reunite or with their at dad least a more serious version like they're less they're more they're not as hapless anymore now i feel like they're uh they're an actual threat now i think i just think uh, that okay mjf feud was bad because at the end of the day i guess no that one was um joe and mjf winning not just mjf by himself but still that whole mjf bullet club gold feud to full gear kind of hurt everyone i would say involved and you know joe has come unscathed mostly because he won the freaking title uh jy has kind of come back from the continental classic so if the guns can kind of rebuild themselves and gain some momentum i'm all for it i've been saying for months that they should be the ones to take the trios champs off the acclaim so Plus, a lot of people would be mad if the Guns beat the Acclaimed for a title again, so I'd be happy That'd with be that. Funny. I know, the Guns Ooh, keep pulling would... spoiler, man. They did it to FTR way back when. Then held It'd a be uh, bragging them. rights, for sure. Yeah. I like that. Uh, cool, yeah. It's great to see the Guns. Uh, yeah, I like what you uh, how you put that, Chad. They seem a little less hapless and a little more focused uh yeah i like that um yeah great episode 
front to back. Uh, yeah, I kind of wish we had another pay per view kind of squeezed in between now and Revolution. Which, hey man, they announced Wrestle Dream. Yeah, not a lot of lead to and that. then. Yeah, so I, I think we're gonna get another one. That's gonna be another hot prediction. I'm not. Um, I'm not like super down. But remember when uh, like Full Gear just ended, and I was like, "We're a long way from World's End, guys." This is kind of where I'm at too. Like this episode was great. I'm really looking forward to next week's Dynamite. But it's that cautious optimism that Chad said, where I'm still like, "We're still two months today." We're two months away from Revolution. Yeah, the gobbledygooker could come out next episode. Like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Takeshi yeah. could get like jobbed out in five seconds, and this push that we've been hyping ourselves up about is just dead. So anything can happen in the world of AEW. Or wrestling. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we didn't get our uh, Mercedes Monet. We got uh, Deanna Deanna Perrazzo. But Yeah, I think they're they've got that in their back pocket for uh, something pretty huge. Um, but yeah, not not a ton of news going on in the uh, wrestling world. Um, yeah, nothing really popped out at me the past day or two. Um, yeah, aside, I mean, from the WWE side, that's why I wanted to look up the announcement because it was rumored about the TNA stuff. So I was like, oh, maybe like that would yeah. be interesting. Uh, it'd be big news, but no, it's just a location of a pay per view, which frankly, I don't really care about unless it's Portland or Seattle because those are the only two places. Okay. If they were like Royal Rumble in like Northern California, I'd consider it because that would be big. But yeah. For the most part, anything that's not Portland or Seattle or in between that, I'm not going to make much way to see it. And then The Rock came out, but we were talking about that when we recorded the Dynamite re- or the World's End review. So, yeah. No story is getting finished here. We'll see. We'll see. I can't believe there are people that are like, nah, screw Cody. Rock and Roman should main event. And I'm like, you want him to win? You want him to keep that title for longer? <laughs> All right. So can't they just do. Is. Yeah. Can't they just do Rock and Roman at Rumble? That's what I, I've been pitching that. Like, I would. And I, that would be great. Roman wins. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't that be the way to do it? Like, They're logically? Already- they are already setting up a triple threat of like AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and LA Knight. So whoever wins that will challenge him at the Rumble. So that's why they say no. But there's like oh. um, there are a million different ways people have been speculating it. The best way that I've heard that I'm like I don't want to get too excited on this because it's too good. So Cody does not win Rumble, but Roman Reigns enters in the Elimination Chamber. Do I need to explain the Elimination ta- Chamber to you, Dave, or do you get it? Uh, so like a guy comes out every yeah, so it's few minutes. Six guys in a big cage with in the middle of the ring. There's four pods, four guys in each pod. Once every two and a half minutes, some guy comes out, and so it's basically of those six guys, who's the last one still standing? Ooh, the lights went out. Dog knocked it over. Um, essentially, they are pitching that it's Roman against his top five opponents. So like Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, right? Just five names. And then your first one eliminated is Reigns. That's what people are pitching. And like, ooh, that would be huge. And then Cody Rhodes wins it in the elimination chamber, which I don't think of that. I think what they would probably do is have Cody win the elimination chamber without Roman in it, and it's just a shot at Roman. But I don't know. Rock could win the Royal Rumble and just challenge Roman, and I can go eat shit, you know? That's that's kind of how uh, I feel, is like, I might just have to eat shit on this one and wait until Mania 41, which if that's the case, oof, I'm a big AEW fan then, brother. All the way. Based on their track record, how confident are you about WWE doing the right thing? 
solely I based like, on track record. I'm like 20% right now. No. Ooh. Maybe 50. Because there's like one big thing, and it's such a like dumb thing, but this mania isn't even, it's a zero. It's ending on a big round zero which every Mania 10, 20, and 30 has ended with an underappreciated top-level talent that just hasn't had his time of day winning a big one. So it was Bret Hart, WrestleMania 10, Chris Benoit at WrestleMania 20, which at the time, you know, at the time, that was fine. And then Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30. So at WrestleMania 40, it would theoretically be Cody's big moment. That's like, at, at this point, that's the only thing keeping me at 50%. If this was WrestleMania 39 we were walking in, I'd be like, I would be at like 10%. I would be convinced that they're going to do Rock and Roman and Cody can fight Braun Strowman or I don't know, anyone else, which it's not what I want. It's not what a lot of people want. I do think he's going to be in that Rumble. I hate to say it. That's that's my, I was wanting to put a bet on it with you too. Hmm. I bet you five bucks. How long does it take to recover from a torn labia uh, labrum? He just oh, wrestled. Come on. A, that was funny. He that just wrestled. Oh, he just wrestled a pay per view match. He could be number thirty in the Royal Rumble. That's what I'm saying. That's uh, I'll bet five bucks. Who's in? Who's in? I'm in for five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if if MJF is in the Royal Rumble this year. You both owe me five bucks, but if he's not, no. I'll give you five bucks. No cash. Deal. I'm gonna be right. We're gonna be winning. Yep. Um, uh, another bit of uh, exciting news. Uh, literally tomorrow, we're going to Prestige. Prestige. Roseland Seven. Whoa, uh, why? Gonna why? be great. I saw that card again today. Uh, Leo Rush will be a great. Uh, substitute for Ray Phoenix. Man, we've got Sammy Callahan having a match. Sky Blue, Willow Nightingale, uh, Alex Shelley, and Chris Sabin, and Alan Angels. Well, he's not as cool, but is it, uh, um, Timothy is Thatcher. Is Samurai or Samurai del Sol? Is that Kalisto? Yep. Oh, oh I love Kalisto. Studio. Banger, man. I'll get to see he him do some the... lucha thing. Yeah, he's probably the biggest name on the card, huh? Technically, realistically. Yeah. Yeah. Made it the furthest. Ah, yeah, yeah. Like most of the normies would probably get it. But for me, I'm looking at Sky Blue and Willow. I'm looking at you guys are saying Leo's pretty good. Um, Timothy yeah. Thatcher. I'm going to love seeing that guy. I don't think I've seen my top match before. of the night. Uh, gonna be my top there. match is going to be that uh, Rose City death match. Uh, Amira versus Drexel. Yeah. Yeah. A little uh, intergender death match. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, or the first show we went together, it was him against uh, Ty of Valkyrie, right? Oh, actually, this, this might be my first intergender match. I haven't seen one of those before. Oh, really? Except, cool. Except cool, for like, cool. like a comedy botch on Raw. Like, oh, Rhea Ripley's going to kill Akira Tozawa for three minutes, and we just had an intergender match. Like, I've seen those, but like oh, an actual this competitive. Is like, ooh. Dude, you're going to, yeah, I'm so excited for you, Chandler. Dude, prestige is something special. I'll be there. I'm off at six. I'll, I'll beam right over. Yeah, yeah going to be great. Uh, the show starts at 7. Uh, doors open at 6. Uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna be there and we're going to love it. Uh, but yeah, I think that just uh, might about do it. Uh, been a long episode this time, huh? <laughs> Lots to talk about. It was an exciting it was an exciting dynamite. It felt like a, uh, I don't know, what, what would you call it? Like a new beginning or a, a fresh start? <laughs> yeah, something, maybe. something like that. One by uh, not not being <laughs> being unironic, it, it it felt like a breath of fresh air. Is a, like a did. kind of a realistic way of looking at it. Where I'm seeing people that I have not seen on Dynamite in a while: Orange Cassidy, Takeshita, 
and they were having really good matches. So I would like it, the vibe of this dynamite to continue. I'm hyped on Private Party too. I want them uh, doing great things. Can't wait for you to see that shooting star for Mark Quinn. They're I was gonna, trying to look it be, up uh, while, we were, while you were talking about them. I was like, I want to see this live so we can have my reaction, but I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think that just uh, about does it. Uh, thank you too for uh, having the, being on the show, having a uh, thoughtful uh, commentary. Um, Thanks for hosting. Yeah, great. The hostess oh, yeah, was yeah. the hostess. Exactly. Um, yeah, we've uh, got a couple cool uh, top five videos out. Um, we got uh, Chad made a really cool one, uh, what, yesterday? Two days ago? Yeah, um, two days ago. Yeah, about uh, the top five WTF moments in wrestling. Uh, looks really great. Did a great job. Yeah, uh, a lot of cool, cool moments on there. Uh, me and Chandler each did our uh, why MJF should uh, stay with AEW is what I did, and it, and MJF should go to WWE. One that Chandler did. Uh, yeah, check those out, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, uh, help our channel grow. We're uh, like three months in now, and uh, we are uh, on the ride of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun as heck. I just ordered that bottle of the bomb because uh, we're creeping up on that. All right. I, I finally yeah. found it. It's these. When we get to 100 subscribers, I'll eat five at once. Okay. Okay. Uh, that, I, yeah. And I know that's a little chickening out, but like these do hurt, and I I, I really yeah. can't handle least, spicy food. At least they have a pleasant taste at the end. But then, and like, this ooh, is definitely ooh. what she said. Then I'll just have five balls in my mouth. Right. Right. <laughs> and I'll be like, all right, guys, job. Kind of mega came back. It was pretty cool. I'm always trying to try. <laughs> uh but yeah cool yeah we're getting there we're uh 77 uh subscribers right now Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah yeah like a week ago we were still in the 30s so not bad yeah we we're just talking yeah. about being at 69 like a couple of days ago yeah. you know? i texted both of you and we hit that yeah good that's a good goal good milestone <laughs> where's our black susan it's 420 the next big one Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, yeah. Uh, great show. Had a lot of fun. And uh, don't forget to check us out on the audio realm where all podcasts are found. Uh, cool. Thank you, everyone. And uh, yeah, that should do it. Have a great night and goodbye. Peace. Bye bye. <laughs>